Major support for Do the Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Dolly Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and Kern High School District with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael. I'm April. And in studio with us, we have Malachi. Malachi, if somebody needed to contact us, what would they need to do? For math homework, help call. In Bakersville, it's 661-636-4357. Everywhere else, want 866-636-6284. Email do the math at current.org. We're online at do the math online.net and social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. All right. Thank you very much for that. So Malachi, where do you go to school and what grade are you in? I'm in eighth grade at Thompson Junior High. Home of the Timberwolves, if I'm not mistaken, yes. right? All right. So I know that a lot of students we have, and sometimes they're in elementary school and all of the social media things, they're like, they've heard of them, but they don't have them. Do you have any of those things that you belong to? Like you? Yes. All uh, of them? Or? Um, no, just Instagram. <laughs> just Instagram? Yep. Okay. And what about you, April? Um, I have, I don't have a YouTube account, but I, I do have a YouTube account, but I don't have like a channel, but I have all the rest, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and then I subscribe to YouTube, but I don't have my own channel. All right. <laughs> Well, I know that Do The Math has all those things because Do The Math needs all of those things for the social media and stuff like that. Do you spend a lot of time with the social media mm. things that you have? Not really because I have homework a lot sometimes. So. Sometimes? Yes, yeah, sometimes. All right, because I was going to say, sometimes you don't have homework mm -hmm. either, right? Yes. All right. So how is eighth grade going so far? It's going good. You right like here. it? Yep. What's, it, you don't have to say math. Okay, if it is, great. But what is your favorite subject in school? Mm, P.E. or art. P.E. or art? Yeah. Okay, so P.E., I can understand that. But why, so are, do you like to do art? Is it? it um, to me, art is relaxing and it's selective, so I was glad that I got it. And it's a really free period, so you can draw or sketch. And so is that it. mostly what you guys do in art, or are there different mediums you get to work with? Um, we do watercolor, paint, pastels. So it's not usually we're always drawing something, so sometimes it's different. Sometimes Making things or something. Yeah. All right, good. So are you ready to do a little bit of work today? Yes. What kinds of things are you doing in math right now? We're doing translations, reflections, geometry. All right, so if April wants to do a little bit of translations and reflections with you today, she can do a little something with that with you today. I've got some other very good problems for you to work <laughs> on today as well, all right? Okay. But don't worry about that right now, because first what we're going to do is take a look at today's Math in the News. All right, today's Math in the News has to deal with sports. So do either of you ladies watch sports or participate in sports? I participate in track. So you're, you're in track. Yes. And what is your event? Um, four by four, four by one, 400, 200. So, so you're part of a relay team. Yes. And do you like the 100 or the 400 better? Mm, 400. The 400. Yeah. Why is that? Um, it's more about the lap. And you have a chance to catch up more if you're not a sprinter type. Okay. And do you do well? I mean, would yeah. you like to share your time? <laughs> um, we did good. We got first place. In oh, what do you mean you did good? You did <laughs> awesome if you got first place, right? Yes. We did good. Um, it was a good year last year for the first time being in track since quarantine. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, especially, right, you're able to go out and do things, right. Right? things you've been training for for a long time and stuff like that. So you're a, a track person. and. Mm -hmm. 
running events mostly is what you do, I understand, yes. right? Okay. Do you watch sports? Not really. Okay, so you just do track and that's your thing. Right. April, anything that you I, watch? I like or? basketball. I'm from a basketball family. I played basketball in high school. Um, my daughter just graduated. She played basketball in college. So oh, we're good. a basketball family. And I love the Warriors. Go Warriors. <laughs> 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 All right, well, they've had some success in the last few years. Can't say the same for the New York Knickerbockers. They, uh, they, they see the playoffs in the distance, uh, but glory days are gone for a little while. But this is a great time of year because right now baseball season is coming to an end. There's a lot of races going on for playoff spots and things like that. Football has just started, so everybody's into that. College football is getting into their, you know, conference play and stuff. So there's a lot of things going on right now. And occasionally a little bit of history happens at this time of year with baseball also. So there's a graphic that we've got. We'll go ahead and put this up. And this is a member of the New York Yankees. And this person is Aaron Judge. Have either of you ladies heard of this person? I have not. Well, now you have, and now you need to know about this person. They also say all rise because his last name is Judge. Do you guys get it? Uh, like all rise, here okay. comes the judge. Yes. Right? Okay, so anyway, so let's take a look at the graph. Oh, oh, gave a buzzer on that. Whoa, whoa, I didn't think that was going to happen. Well, we're going to have to have some words later on with somebody. Anyway, he has hit 60 home runs this season, which is a lot, okay? And they're saying he's on pace to hit 66 home runs. Now, if you take a look at New York Yankees history, those are the people that have had the most home runs in a season in Yankees history. So the most was Roger Maris in 1961. He hit 61. But before that, it was 1927. That was a long time ago when Babe Ruth hit 60. Had either of you ever heard of Babe Ruth? Yes. Uh, see, now there you go. You don't watch a lot of baseball. You don't know a lot about baseball, but you know Babe Ruth. Therefore, you know about the New York Yankees. Yes. All right. So you can see that Aaron has now hit his 60th home run, and the season isn't over, which is why they're saying he will be on pace to break that record. So that's kind of a big deal to break a record that has been around for a long time, right? Since 1961, you know, you got 60 years in there uh, that this record has stood. So it's something that a lot of people are looking at. And the way they do that is they go, how many games have you played and how many home runs have you hit already? So they go, all right, you hit a home run every two and a half games, let's say. So if you have 15 games left, you should hit this many more home runs, right? So there's math in there and the numbers on how they figure out what somebody is on pace for based on your past performance. Kind of make sense? Yeah. All right, good. Well, that's all it was. It was just because that is news and he hit his 60th home run last night, so he's on pace to get 66 and hopefully break the record. So that is today's Math in the News. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. Malachi, you said you heard about Do the Math a couple of years ago. Yes. And was that your regular teacher? Was it a math teacher? Or how did that come about that you heard about the show a few years ago? It was my regular teacher, and we were getting into math. And she, um, she said that she heard about you guys, and she's watched you a couple of times. Okay. And if you guys needed help, you could phone us and let us know you needed some homework help. Yes and we would be more than happy to help you. Well, that's exactly what we're still doing today in our 21st season. If you do happen to phone in today before 5.30 this afternoon, we do one of your math problems, you'll be winning a ticket to the Kern County Fair. So the fair starts today. It will go all through next week and then a little bit after that, but today and both days next week, if you phone in, you will have an opportunity to win yourself a ticket to the Kern County Fair. All right, we're gonna get you working in a little bit. But first, we always have opportunities to go out and about throughout Kern County and check out how math is applied in the real world. Back out here, we're so excited. We're back with Craig out here at Queen Caterpillar. Hello. Uh, what is this building focused on, and you know how does it play into the training program here? That's a great question. Yeah. So previously we focused more on the other side, which primarily are the tractors that are in the dirt. This time in this building we focus on our forklift business, 
our power generation, so generators, stationary engines, which could be anything from pulling water out of the ground to powering something else, and also on-highway vehicles, school buses, uh, semi-trucks that are Caterpillar powered. Wow, so really anything, you know, it's not just agriculture equipment yes. or, or heavy duty construction, really it's anything that really uses power, you guys have a hand in it. Correct. That's fantastic. I mean, I look around and we have, you know, it looks like a water truck here. Yeah. We have a ditch witch. I'm sure people have seen both of these around Bakersfield and around the valley, not just at construction or agriculture sites, but really anywhere you'll see some of this equipment out here. And I mean, my next question is how do people get started in this business? I mean, do people have to go to college for it? Can they just come straight out of high school? Caterpillar has a program, Think Big program, we'll talk about a little bit later, um, to get technicians certified, Caterpillar certified, and also come out of the program with an AA. Um, we, ha we do have folks that come either from a ag background where maybe they worked on the farm, people that maybe come from another side of the business, I guess, either on highway truck, um, from a dealership or something like that, and technicians that have zero experience that have on-the-job training. So Perfect. it's a combination of everything. So I believe we do have someone else who can shed a little more light on that also. I believe uh, we have another person here from Queen Caterpillar. Yeah, this is Billy Ritter. So Billy's the manager Billy, for Power. So Billy, I mean, what's uh, like, like someone who's in high school right now? I mean, I know uh, we have a huge program, the C-Tech and ROC program out with Kern High. Is that something you guys recommend to students who are looking to get into this industry to get that hands-on experience before they come here? That's a really good entry point for a lot of people that have never dealt with this and it gets their feet wet so to speak. ROC is really good they actually go quite in depth a lot more than what I've expected and get a lot of people that come here with a lot more knowledge than the generic run-of-the-mill technician. If they come in with that training do they get to start working on machines right away um, or is there a little bit of you know the, the, the caterpillar side of the training to go hands-on? We can kind of gauge how much they already know and a lot of them they'll let you know you know, what, up front, like what they do or they're, or they're comfortable with or not. And we can actually put them straight to work on a lot of different things. Wow. Usually we'll have them shadow with like a, a senior technician to make sure that they're doing it right and safely. And, but beyond that, usually within a couple months, if they're doing good and we can see that they're doing it the, the correct way and the safe way, we'll let them go and kind of do, them, do their own thing, just monitor them. Right, so, so do they necessarily have to go through the Caterpillar training? Is that something that's required, that Think Big program? If they show some really good forethought and knowledge on what they're wanting to do, we can progress that with external training, either whether it be our own training department, but they don't have to go to CAT school specifically. Awesome. Yeah, we have different avenues um, on-site as well as off-site to help technicians get through that, and, and also somewhat of an internship, so whether it's ROC, or like Billy's saying, working hand in hand with other technicians, the, the CAT program is not required. Okay, so definitely, you know, whatever someone comes to you with, you guys have the tools, the training, the, the forethought ready to get them from whatever stage of life they were in into here, ready to work and start working on these heavy machines. Yes. yes. That's amazing. Well, for now, we're gonna end it there. We're gonna send it back to you guys in the studio. When we come back, we're gonna talk to someone who went through the ROC or C-Tech program and we'll see how it's helped them get along here at Queen Caterpillar. We'll come back to you guys right after this. Thanks for that, Mick, and also thanks to everybody out at Queen Caterpillar. Great visit when we went out there. And uh, the programs that they have, especially working with ROC and CTEC to get the students into that industry, is just I mean, beyond helpful. I mean, it just sets them up for success right away when they step into that industry. Malachi is an eighth grade student at Thompson Junior High, home of the Timberwolves. Heard about Do the Math in sixth grade and you finally made it to the show, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, you're ready to do a little bit of work. Over to the board, ladies, let's go. So Malachi, what is one thing that you had to buy for school this year? Anything at all? Oh, um, Could be clothes or? I would say f binder. Binder. How much was a binder? Do you remember what your binder mm, cost? $10. Whoa, $10, really? They come with paper and pencils and so many, uh, I'm only kidding, it <laughs> kind of seems expensive for a binder, but all right. So uh, let's say $10, what else did you have to buy? Um, pencils, lead pencils, um, backpack. Okay, do you have an idea, do you kind of remember an, an estimate on kind of how much that stuff was? Mm, all together? Yes. Um, maybe 60? Let's make it $63 and 23 cents, 
All right, so let's put that up there. $63.23. All right. Do you have an idea what the tax rate is in Kern County? No, I don't. All right. Do you think it's over or under 10%? Under. That's a good guess right there. So choose a number between six and nine. Seven. Seven. Let's make the tax rate 7% even. All right, so you just write 7% any way you want. All right, so you and April together are gonna figure out what was the amount of tax and then what was the total including the tax. All right, mm -hmm. so you and April go to it. All righty, are you ready Malachi? Yes. Okay, so um, let's talk about this tax percent. What do, we, what do you know about persons? Um, I know that they can be fractional or decimal. They can be fractional or decimal. Okay, so when I have an amount of money and I'm multiplying by a sales tax, tax I need to change my percent to a decimal. So how do I change 7% into it? How would you change 7% into a decimal? Um. Okay, rewrite it one more time. Oh. Okay, I just wanted to, to clarify where the decimal is. Oh. So it's gonna be, um, so why did you put um, the decimal, a zero in front and then the decimal, why did you do that? To make it 700, because it's 100%. Okay, so percents are out of 100, yes. and so it's 700, so you wrote 700s. Okay, so what we're gonna do is now we're gonna multiply. We're gonna multiply um, the cost of your back to school items, 63, dollars and 23 cents so if you can write 63.23 and now we're going to find seven percent of that amount so um, we're going to write underneath the 23 we're going to write your seven hundredths and then just draw a line and let's multiply talk to me about your multiplication as you multiply okay seven times three is 21 so you carry the 2 7 times 2 is 14 plus 2 is 16 and you carry the 1 7 times 3 plus 1 is 22 I carry the 2 7 times 6 is 42 and then 44 so now we have this Thank huge you. number okay Tell me why you put the decimal there. Because you carry the decimal from here and you put it down here. Down there. So how many places do we ha have behind the decimal um, in our multiplication problem? Two. Two? So show me where those two are. What about the tax? So how many do we have now? Four. Four. And so how many have you moved? Three. Three. How many do we need to move? Four. Yes. So let's, uh, you can use the eraser real quick. Let's adjust that. Okay. So what does this number represent? How much tax? Yes. So this is how much tax you'll be charged on your purchase. So how much money did you spend? $63.23. And how much tax did you have to pay on that? $4. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> $4 in? 400 4,260. So when we're talking about change, how many decimal places should we go to the nearest what? 100. 100, okay. So I need to find to the nearest 100. 100. So what number would I, how, how do I round that? How do I find the nearest 100? We round the tenths place. So how many, how many pennies are in, in a dollar? 100. So we need the hundredths place. Right. So put an underline under the hundredths place in your text. So, if I'm rounding to this place value, what do I, what's the process for that? What, do you, what are you thinking about? How would you do that? Um, anything under five is, you don't round, and five and above you round. So this becomes what? Or it stays? It what? stays. It stays? So this, I look at this number, mm -hmm. and this is what determines that. So say what you just said to me again, anything above? Five. You, you go? You round. You round. So I look at this number to determine that. Right. So if I'm looking at this number, what do I do with that two? You turn into a three. Turn into a three. So let's write that as a dollar amount. That's going to be four dollars and what? Twenty-three. 
four dollars and three cents. We're rounding to the hundreds. Oh. There's a decimal right there. So four dollars and Okay, so what happened to this four right here? So this is four tenths, hundreds, and if we're stopping right here, can I use your pen? Yeah. <laughs> if we're stopping right here, right, because this is our hundreds, I need both of these to be represented here. So if I'm going to round this to the next, it's going to be $4.40 three cents, because we still have to keep that, right? Oh. Just the 43, and then that's it. Go the oh. other way. <laughs> okay. So our tax is, and we need three cents right there. Just a three. Oh. So 43 right there. <laughs> there you go. So our tax is how much? $4.43. And our total purchase, or our purchase was? $63.20. So how much did you give the cashier? You so how do you find out how much you have to give the cashier? Subtract. Opposite. You add? Yes, because this is what I'm multiplying to find my tax, and so I have to add my tax to my purchase right. to find my total. So let's add your purchase and then your tax and how much is the cashier going to ask you for? 3 plus 3 is 6, 4 plus 2 is also 6, carry the decimal, 3 plus 4 is 7, and you carry it 6. And, and there you go, and we're talking about money. All right, so. Nicely done. That's $67.66. <laughs> 66 That's pretty cents. funny. I mean, we just made up those numbers, <laughs> and it almost kind of would have been awesome if it was 66 <laughs> just to have it come out with all the same numbers like that. But anyway, nicely done right there. Feeling good about that now, Malachi? Yes. All right, so that's what we want you to get a little better understanding about that. 636-4357 is the phone number right now. We'll go to the phones. Henry, how are you this afternoon? Good. And you're a seventh grader, correct? Yeah. All right, as soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem that you're working on, and April will be able to help you with it. Okay, the math problem is Inez wants to buy a skateboard, but she doesn't know if she has enough money. The price of the skateboard is $80 and the sales tax is 7%. Oh. What will be the cost of the tax and the total cost of the skateboard? Well, this is a perfect problem because Malachi was just working on a problem like that. So you and April work it out. And if you guys need help, Malachi's right there. <laughs> okay. um, was there a difference in the one he was doing though? Because um, the 7% sales tax is like an increase, right? It's like gratuity. Right, when you pay sales tax, it's going to increase things, right? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. You are correct in that. And so this, the skateboard is $80. $80. And the tax is 7%. And you need to find the total cost, correct? Yep. All right. Okay. Take so, it away. So did you watch the last problem? Um, yeah. Okay. So where should we start? We should start by finding... Um, well, the way I do is the uh, is um, I just add the percent to a hundred, so one hundred percent plus seven percent is like one hundred and seven. Oh, I see. He's doing a little shortcut. <laughs> he, with it. Yeah. he is doing a hundred okay. uh, a shortcut. So that's one hundred and seven percent. And then we're, what are we going to do with our um, one hundred and seven percent at this point? So I need to take this 107% and then what do I need to do with, with that? Um, Malachi and I took our percent and we changed it to a decimal. So how do I change 107% to a decimal? Uh, 1.1 1 .1 times 107. So what this is going to give me is when you multiply here, you're going to get um, the tax and the amount of the skateboard all total together. And so how much is the skateboard? $80. So now I'm going to take that, the price of the skateboard and multiply that by the 107%. And um, go ahead and multiply for me. Tell me what the multiplication should look like. Okay. 
What's zero times seven? Huh? Zero times seven? Oh, yeah. Um, one of seven times, uh, oh, one of seven times 80. One, one oh what? One oh seven, I mean, one point zero seven times 80, right? Correct. Okay, let me. So let's multiply now. Okay. So where are you going to go first? Okay. So, real quick. Um, should it sounds we multiply? like he's trying to do it on his own back there. Yeah. Should we multiply zero by everything? Or oh, yeah, can I do something zero, different? <laughs> well, you shouldn't multiply zero by everything because um, zero times anything is zero. So then what, what can I put right here? I can just put a zero, right? Yeah, you put the three zeros right there. Okay, I'm gonna do three. <laughs> and then, so now I need to, I'm done with my ones. And here, I'm gonna put a placeholder because I'm not multiplying ones. So and now I'm gonna multiply the eight. And eight times seven is? Eight times seven is 56. So I'm gonna put six in the ones and carry the tens. And you just told me um, zero times anything is zero. So eight times zero is zero. I'm going to add five to that. You carry the five and um, add the eight. I mean, add the five down there, and then eight times one is eight. So the answer would be 85.6, right? How'd you get that? Well, what are you um, thinking about? Why is it 85? What, I'm talking about money, right? So is yeah. it 85.6, or what does that sound like with money? How much is that skateboard going to be with tax? $85.06. So where, where are we placing our decimal? Between what two numbers? Between five and six. I'm placing it between the five and the six. Why are you doing that? Because you hop two over, since that's how many it is on the right side right there. So now read this to me again. The cost of the skateboard with tax. The cost of the skateboard with tax is eighty-five point six. Is eighty five dollars and sixty cents. Sixty cents. Great job. There you go. Nicely done. Thanks for that phone call, Henry. If you need some more help, we do have phone tutors available until five thirty. So I'm glad April that you had him say it again, because he said eighty-five and six cents, I think, first, mm -hmm. and then you say eighty-five point six, but you don't go to the store and go, I'll give you eighty-five point six. They're gonna go. What are you giving me? You know, <laughs> so you say $85.60, all right? So Malachi, as you were watching that, did that make sense, that problem right yes. there again? And it's funny how it was 7% again. I mean, the one that you chose mm -hmm. off random right there. So nicely done on both problems. We do have phone tutors available until 5.30, but right now we do have another opportunity. We're going to go out, check out with the uh, folks at Quinn Caterpillar and see what uh, Mickey is up to out there. So what do you got? Welcome back out to Queen Caterpillar. Mickey here, and I'm back with Billy. And Billy, looking at it behind us, we have some tore down machinery, but before someone can work on this, what's the process to get someone certified or trained by CAT? I know before you mentioned the Think Big program, what does that look like for an employee? Think Big program, it's more a little bit of everything. It's a very well-rounded training. They come back with the basic knowledge that they should be able to, you know, pretty much tear an engine down, work on hydraulics, cooling packages, stuff like that. So they go out there, get the fundamentals, come back here and begin to use that in real world scenarios. Now, do you guys just throw them straight onto the floor and say, all right, you got your nine weeks, good luck, here we go, or, or do they shadow someone or is it a little of both? It's a little bit of both. If, if they come back and they, ha they can prove, you know, that they have picked up what they learned in school, we usually try to, you know, let them do their thing and just shadow them, kind of watch them, make sure they don't you know, mess up or get hurt. Okay. But there's some situation where we'll, if it's really an in-depth kind of a job, like a tear down or an overhaul, we'll stick them with a senior technician so that way they can shadow and they can pick up traits and different things that maybe they didn't quite learn in school. Awesome. And I know we have Chris here who has been through the Think Big program, but not only oh, no. just Think Big, but also the ROCC Tech program here in the yes, current sir. high district. So Chris, was Think Big your first one? Was ROC your first experience? Or was there something before that where you had hands-on experience working with uh, tools and automotive? Yeah, so growing up, my grandfather and my father were both mechanics. So I grew up in the mechanics field. We had a shop out in Lost Hills. That's pretty much where I did most of my growing up. And then my first introduction into the professional style 
mechanics was ROC. I went to the ROC program my senior year of high school. And then from then, uh, there, Cat did a presentation, kind of like an orientation for this Think Big program. I applied, I ended up getting selected. So it's a four year program, but the first two years are actually going to schooling. It's CAT schooling mixed with community college. So you go in nine week blocks back and forth, nine weeks at school, nine weeks here at the dealership working for the first two years. And then you get your two year degree, you pass all the CAT courses that are mixed in with your GED. And then the second two years are here on the job, shadowing and pretty much proving that you can use what you learned at think big and you can handle it on your own. So uh, here in the service bay, I mean, do you stay here in the shop or do you go out in the field or a little of both? So when I, I used to be a, a shop tech, but now I'm a, a field technician in a service truck making field calls doing on-site repairs that are not here to shop. So a repair like this, is this something you would go out in the field and be able to do hands-on in the moment or is this more of a bigger repair on, on a pump here? So uh, this is something I would get called out to. I could do very big repairs to this, but this one needed a, the repair is too big to do out in the field, so we ended up pulling it from location, bringing it down to the shop so the repair could be done here at the shop. Okay, so, but even still, this is something you could load up in the back of the truck, you know, you could diagnose it out there and yeah, go, absolutely. oh, I can get most of this done, but I'm not gonna be able to finish the job in the field. I need a little more resource Yeah, available. if it was just the case of pulling a cylinder head or something, I could do it out in the field, but this one ended up needing a little bit more work than that. Then the, the cleanliness factor needed to be up there so we brought it back to the shop. I did unbolt it from location, put it in the back of the service truck, used the crane, and I brought it back here to the shop. That's awesome. Well, Billy, Billy, Chris, thank you guys so much. Thank when we you. come back from you guys in the studio, we're gonna keep looking here at Quinn Caterpillar, see what other opportunities there are for students to come into the workforce, be prepared, and come and join the, the industry of big yellow machines that never stop and they never quit. Back to you guys in the studio. Up, they never quit. Quinn Caterpillar right there. Once again, big thanks to those guys for having us out. We do have Malachi, an eighth grade student from Thompson Junior High in studio with us. If you phone in today and we do one of your math problems, you'll win yourself a ticket to the Kern County Fair. We'll also be giving those away next week on the 27th and 28th of September. Also, other activities coming up brought to you by the Kern County Superintendent of Schools. Holiday lights at Calm, and this has been a family tradition for a long time that will be coming up during the holiday season. But before that, we have a brand new feature coming out called Autumn Nights, and that will start in October, and we will be giving away passes to that. That is where you are able to walk throughout Calm and uh, get all of uh, that with the animals around and things like that, and lights autumn lights and autumn nights and that is going to be happening out at Com. and a big thank you to Quinn Caterpillar because they are also a major sponsor of those holiday lights and autumn nights and we just love having them part of do the math talking about how they work with the students from ROC and CTEC and get them all going into the workforce and showing them that the math that you're doing now in school is applicable and how they use it in that industry so Malachi in math, you said that you were working on geometry right now, reflections, translations, and things like that. Yes. Right? And that's what you're working on right now. currently. Yes. And sometimes it gets a little confusing. Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> so that's why we've got you in April. You're going to work on some of that right now. So ladies, take it away. So let's do a translation first. Do you, um, can you talk to me about a translation? Do you remember what a translation is? A translation is a slide. A slide. So you slide. Okay. So we're going to slide this triangle, triangle ABC, and we're going to create an image, okay? And so, um, go ahead and pick up a pen. We're going to slide with the translation of 7, negative 3. So can you tell me what these numbers represent? Um, the 7 represents positive on the y-axis and the negative 3 um, represents negative, on, negative 3 on the y-axis. So this first number is which axis? Y X. X axis and the second number is the y. y axis. So when I'm um, translating or sliding or moving, I'm gonna take each vertice, so each corner of this triangle is a vertice, so I'm gonna take each vertice and then what am I gonna do with it? Slide. Slide, so if I take A, I'm gonna go which way on the x axis how many times? I'm gonna go right seven units. Okay, so can you um, go right seven units with your A? Can you count out loud? Oh, what? Okay. Wait, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, wait. And now I also have to translate three down. Three down. One, two, three. Now I'm going to draw my point. 
And label what? A. A what? Prime. Yes. <laughs> Why is it A prime? Because it's the pre no, pre-image. Pre-image. And image. Image. And so it's the copy, right? Yes. So we're going to label it that accordingly. OK, so can you do the other units for me as well? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, oh. Instead of counting your C, right seven, down three, is there another way you can find out where C lands? We can draw it to make the same shape. But how will you know where C lands? Because oh, it's on the same line as B. Ah, so it is on the same line as B. How far, um, what's the distance be from po between point B and point C? About four squares. So could you use that as a measurement as well? Yes. And you don't have to count every single time. If right. I know that that's four, it's going to be in my image, it's going to be how many? Four. OK, so let's plot C prime. And draw that triangle. Can we do one more? Indeed, one? you can. <laughs> OK. OK, so that's a translation. That's a slide. Yes. So what if I asked you to reflect triangle ABC that over the x-axis? That is a flip. That is a flip. Yes. Which way am I flipping and what, what's you're happening? You're flipping it on the x-axis, so you're flipping it this way. That way? And how, how do you know? where to start plotting points if I'm flipping triangle ABC here. You count from the pre-image down, however many units it is from the line of reflection. Oh, and our line of reflection in this case is? The x-axis. X x-axis? OK, so go ahead and talk to me about what you'll do. So, so which point are you going to do? I'm going to do A first. OK, A is? is? It is one, two, three, four, five points away from the Line of reflection. Line of reflection. So A is five points away from the line of reflection. What do I need to do with it? You, now you count down five Okay. the line of reflection. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to plot that point. And it's going to be what? A double prime. So it's going to be that one. Double prime because it's a different movement. Perfect. Now how do I get B and C? The same way. You count from the point down to the line of reflection. OK. So, so it's one down, so then it's one this way. And, and then see, we can just do four units. <laughs> OK. <way. laughs> oh. And, and go ahead and draw your shape. And so when we're talking about like knowing how to do things, um, we want to use the most efficient method. And so when we translated or slid, you had to count seven and three. So those are long counts. And that's why I said, is there something you can do because that's shorter? But this is short, one, 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 one. So it's OK to go one, one right. because it's shorter than four. Mm -hmm. So having those efficient strategies that will get us there faster is good, too. Great job. There you go. Nicely done. So does that help you out a little bit with what you're doing in yes, class right does. now? Yes, <laughs> Good. All right. So you know what? Leave the grid up there. I've got okay. another perfect problem for you ladies to do. So just erase what you've done. What if I do that? Will it erase the grid too? I would imagine it would. OK. <laughs> see that? You lost your grid. <laughs> so let's see if I can help you. Did you want to uh, insert from? I did from the image. Oh, right there, grid, medium, medium. And you want the this medium, one? The me this one right here. Oh. Okay, go ahead and hit it. Okay. But I don't know how to, oh, there we there go. There you go. Yeah, see, you've got a bell for that. i got a buzzer <laughs> for that. You guys going after history and stuff like that, right? Buzzers and bells going all day long. So, Malachi, you're familiar with areas of rectangles and squares. Yes. All right. So what I'd like you to do is I would like you ladies to draw a four by four square. 
So you can use those grids up there as counting as ones, or you can count each one as a half or a quarter. Whatever you want, draw a four by four square up there. Just one of us? Just one. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sure, you're on that blue line. All right, so it looks like you're just going with each square is one unit, so you've got a four by four. Now, here's what I'd like you to do I would like you to break that square up into different pieces, but no two pieces can be the same. Can you do that? So what, would the, what are the measurements now that you have of those two shapes in there? What are their measurements and what are their areas? This would be one-fourth and this would be three-fourths. And so what would the area be if I needed to find the area of the skinny shape here? Oh, it's fourth. And then what would be the area of the other? And this is twelve. All right. So. If we had the 4x4 four four just by itself, what would the area be of a 4x4? Four four? 16. 16. And you broke it into two separate pieces, do they both add up to 16? So you're good so far. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there any other way that you can break that up into smaller pieces where no two pieces are the same still? Um. It's still one-fourth. If you do it again, it's still going to be one-fourth. So do you want to draw something and just kind of show how you know that it's going to be a fourth again, like one-four? You said equal pieces? Not they cannot equal. be. So no two pieces can be the same. Like if right now, this would be a one-by-four. And if we did it this way, let's say it would be a four by one, those are the same thing. Yes. So you can't have two pieces be the same. Because a one by four and a four by one are the same thing. Okay. All right? They're just oriented differently in the square. So is there any other way to break that up besides what you've got where no two pieces are the same? Because you can break it into three pieces or four pieces or however many pieces you want. I just want to see, is there another way to break that up? No, because if you do this way, they're both equal. And then if you do the same thing with all three down here, they're still equal. Right, you have equal pieces all over the place, right? right? Okay. There's so, go ahead. I was going to say there's no other way. So do we have to go from side to side? Well, you have to cover the whole thing, and they all have to be positive whole numbers. That you're breaking it into. Okay. <laughs> okay. Got it. All right. So we're done with the four by four. Do you think you've exhausted everything? Um. I'm just asking. I mean, I want. Yeah, if you I can find another way, show me another way. Okay. So, what is the area of the largest piece you have right now? Twelve. And what's the area of the smallest piece you have? Four. So subtract both of those, and what do you get? 12 minus 4 equals 8. Okay, so your score for that is 8. What I want you to do is I want you to see, is there any other way that you could break that up, where when you break it up, you take the largest and smallest and get a number smaller than 8? So is there any other way to do that? To get it to be smaller than 8? Right. I don't Whole numbers. Whole numbers. That's, <laughs> that's key. I don't see them. Do you see one? <laughs> I don't, I don't see one. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Mm. Erase <laughs> your black square. Okay. And what I want you to do is over on that side, draw an 8 by 8. Right here? Yeah, over there. Make room so that you can draw an 8 by 8. I think he went nine. 
Did I? <laughs> Which way? <laughs> down. On the right side, I think you went down nine. I did. Probably should be the same color. There you go. All right, so there's your eight by eight. Now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to break that up into different pieces, as many as you want. No two pieces can be the same. The whole thing has to be covered, and I want you to take the largest area and the smallest area, subtract them, and see what your score is. See if you can do better than eight. And I just need to clarify. We have to go from corner to corner. We can't, like, get skull number. Never mind. Okay, never well, mind. Well, if you don't want to go from corner to corner, where do you want to go? So give me an example of what you want to do. I, I want fractions. <laughs> no, you can't do fractions. fractions. Okay. Whole numbers um, only. I would do Go this. for it, Malachi. Um, maybe this way. Okay. So that's that one's more than that one. But we can draw another one, like right here. Wait, what's our area here? Eight by eight. Eight by eight, eight is what? It is 64. 64 units squared. Yep. Okay. So, so just you know the whole thing here. has to add up to 64. And then put a little two right there. Okay. So where, where were you going to draw that line? You started right there. Yep. So what's the area of that first part that you drew? Two by eight. All right, so go ahead and write 16 in that so we know that that is worth 16. That's 16 square units there. And the next little area that you drew is worth what? Eight. Okay. So it looks like you have 40 square units still to deal with, and you can break it up however you want. Because here's, let's say you left it at 40. Okay. I got <laughs> and you like this problem, huh? No, I have a question. Okay, well hold on a second. I want to clarify for Malachi one thing. So Malachi, if we left that top at 40, you would have to go 40 minus 8, because the biggest and smallest, right? Yeah. And you would get 32. That's way mm -hmm. too high, right? So a question? Um so now can I draw a line from here to here? What would that be? It would still be a whole number. Right. So go ahead and draw it. Oh, okay. if, you want, if that's what you want to do. Right here. No, okay. But remember, Wait, on, whatever the area one, of that two, is three, and, the, and the dimensions of is that. Not, eight, that's 32. Eight, so go ahead and draw, draw in whatever you want. You can always erase things, too. And we're subtracting the biggest number from the smallest number, Correct. right? Okay. So get it lower than 8. Okay. So the biggest number from the smallest number? So let's draw a line from here to here. Where do you want to draw it? I have no idea where you want me to draw it. That's what I asked you. Oh. Where do you want to draw it? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Both asked me, where do you want to draw it? Well, you should erase this one. Oh, no, let's leave that one. You want to leave it? Okay. Yeah, let's leave that one. No, we can have ink there. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, where do you want to draw it? I honestly don't know. It's not going to hurt. Just make it easy. <laughs> um, We're just experimenting here. We're going to stop right oh, there. No. Yeah, so you went a little too far. Now, I mean, you could do that, but then it's going to change all your other numbers you had previously. So if you just do that part up there on the upper left, what would the area of that be? 15. That's still 30, that's though. Is. So we can split that, too. Yeah. No, nope, because that's going to be 8. We can't have two 8s. <laughs> Let's make this one a little. You know what happened? 
I think you went over one line too far. I went I'm looking at it, and I think you've got nine across the top and bottom. I do. Yeah. That's what's throwing okay. things off there. <laughs> <laughs> you get that this time, ladies. Now, I mean, erase that other stuff. I'm looking at it. I'm like, that can't make sense. I'm like, we should have just did a nine there, by nine. That, that, <laughs> so just fix your areas They're still from the, the eight and 16. That's, that's so the they same. should still be eight and 16. Right, because now they're drawn correctly. Yes, but they're still the same. Right. Oh, so this changes though. <laughs> That's 25. Right, so you've got 25 in that big area. Mm -hmm. So if you had 25 and you took away the smallest one, 8, you'd be at 17, which is better than the 32 you would have been at. Yes. So now you have to think about, is there a way to break up that area of 25 somehow? Because right now, it's a 5 by 5. So can you break that up into something other than just a whole 25? Could you make it a 15 and a 10? You could, but you can't do 15 again because you already have it. So instead of 15 and 10, yeah, what we, could you break it into? We could do a line right here. Whoa! I just impressed myself. All the time. You didn't even know you could do that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> right, right here, right? Yeah, right there on the right. So that's Can't five. <gasps> no, but it does that help us? Because we had 17, right? Right. Uh, yeah, it helps a little bit. Because what is this one? Four. That's 20. 20 minus 5 is 15, so we're still a little lower. <laughs> it's too low. Okay. So if you left that one at 20, your largest would be 20, your smallest would be 5, your score would be 15. 15. Which is better than what you just had, 16, right? Is that what you had left? Yes, we did. So you're at 15, so that's pretty good. But you know what? I'm going to let you continue thinking about this because I can see you guys are deep in thought. I'm just trying to find out the problem with that. But because you have done some great work so far today, Malachi, you've got yourself a meal courtesy of our friends at Chick-fil-A. So congratulations on that. Have you ever been to Chick-fil-A? Yes, sir. Oh, I've been there too many times. What, what is your favorite item? Probably the mac and cheese. The mac and cheese. It's really mm, good. Nice mac and cheese over there. I'll tell you, old man, like those nuggets, mm, mm, <laughs> mighty fine over there, I'll tell you that. But anyway, we do have, uh, there's yeah, a multiple bell on that one. <laughs> right now, we do have one last opportunity to go back out to Quinn Caterpillar, check out with the staff, and uh, see what make us up to with the boys at Quinn Caterpillar. We're back out here at Quinn Caterpillar, and here the service, one of the service department bays, uh, here with Billy. Billy kind of, we've already talked about how someone gets trained, how ROC can play a role in that, the Think Big program. Now, what does it look like when they come for that first day of work after going to that Think Big program? What are some of the things that they, they bring into the shop that you can see? You're like, oh, yep, they were at Think Big. I can see how they set things up. What are, what are some evidence of that and procedures you guys see when they come in? You, a lot of them are very, they come in with a certain amount of meticulousness to the job. And to improve on that and expound upon it, we usually we stick them with a senior technician. So they learn really good procedures of how the work should flow. It's that way they're not just haphazard. They're not just tearing things apart and throwing them in piles. Okay, so, so I'm looking back here, it's not a pile. You know, someone might look and say, oh, it's, it's, it's dirty, it's, it's messy, but really there's a system back here yes. that someone has understood and learned. Um, can we take a, a walk, yeah. let's kind of see like, kind of give us some examples of things that the program teaches that you guys expect of your technicians to ensure, you know, compliance and safety. Well, like like this, for instance, they got this drive set up here on the, on the table, and you notice it's chained and strapped down for personal safety, because it may set their balance for so long unstrapped, but it could be you, you or somebody else could walk by and I think it'd roll off just because. Okay. It could lose balance or whatever, but that's proper technique for making sure that it, the technician's safe and everybody around it's safe. So even as we walk through, we don't have a thousand pounds gonna roll onto a foot exactly. and all of a sudden you go, oh, there's a, one, it's a customer's part, two, it's, it's a safety violation, and you know, the, the, the cost with that. 
So that's one aspect. What about everything over here on the rags, um, not touching a table surface, it looks like it's pretty organized. I mean, is this something so that way when they put it back together, when they tear it apart, it's all kind of there for them? Yes, it's, it's that way they have their own, and each technician's different the way they may do it. But they, each one of them has their own method to their madness, to say. <laughs> that way they can reach back, and you'll see some technicians, they may not even look, they may just reach back and grab a part. But they know that the part that they put there is the one that should be there. And is that, that's part of that think big training is you need to know what you're using, how to use it, where to put it. And like, but even um, there is the flexibility because technicians, they're not gonna do something the same as the next person in the next bay. Correct. But there's the standard that Caterpillar wants and that you guys at Quinn want to ensure compliance and reliability. Exactly. Well, perfect. Well, Billy, thank you so much. If someone wanted to get involved in the Think Big program or work here at Quinn, Caterpillar, what, what does that process look like? What do they need to do? We actually have a, it's almost like a job application. They actually apply for the position. We will go through each application one by one and then we will you know, bring them in for an actual interview. Most people would approach school as just, well, I'm going to school. But this is actually like, you're doing a job interview. You should come in you know, professional, dressed well, and be ready to talk about what you do know. And most people, they don't, unless these kids are coming out of high school or whatever, they don't have a whole lot of for or past work experience, but bring what you, know, what you do have. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you know what, I worked on the farm or I worked in the shop with my dad work on cars, just stuff like that makes a difference in letting us know what you can or can't do or okay. what, what you should be starting with. Awesome. Well, Billy, on behalf of Do The Math, we want to say thank you for helping us do the math out here at Quinn Caterpillar. I mean, it's definitely I always a great it. opportunity to come out here and see how math is used every day. You know, most people think of, well, I need algebra for this. and I need, There's math all around this yeah. place, especially thousands of pounds of machinery moving around. It, you know, it's an amazing opportunity to see how students can use math and, and not necessarily uh, you know, geometry or different things like that, but how does it play out in the real world? So Billy, thank you so much for that opportunity. No, thank you, I appreciate it. We'll send it back to you guys in the studio. We'll see you next time. All right, thank you, Queen Caterpillar, and thank you, Mickey, for heading out there. And we are almost at 5.30, and the ladies have had some synapses firing over there right now because <laughs> they've been working on these problems. With the struggle, your brains are growing, they are developing. Both of you, you know, right? <laughs> okay? So it's not only the students that are learning, we also as adults always come up with new ways to solve problems and new ways to look at things. So April, go back to our original 4x4 and explain to us what you guys did with this one. So when we were, um, we were trying to adjust, so we, we had the 12 minus 4 and we had a score of 8. And so I was like, well, let's draw a line right here and let's change it. So then we got a score of six. And I was thinking, oh, we can make smaller squares. So we went in and we kept our original and then we just kept making smaller squares so we could have a smaller, bigger number. And the biggest number we got the second time was six and then one is the smallest. So then our score went from eight to five. Right, and you can see that none of those are the same. Right, because that's one of the keys is you can't have anything the same, but you do need to fill the entire thing. Yes. All right. So, nicely done figuring out I'd that like four. I'd like to know what the smallest number is. Yeah. Uh, for the eight by eight? Yeah. yeah. No, and for the four by four. Well, that's the smallest one you found? No, I want to know what, what it is. I'm not going to tell you what it is <laughs> right there. But I will tell you for the eight, the smallest answer is going to be six. Okay. Oh. Now, I have a couple of things I want to clear up. Malachi, did you learn a little something today? I sure did. <laughs> Good. And Malachi, did you have fun today? Yes. Good. Well, we certainly are appreciative of you taking some time coming down and visit us on Do The Math. Thank you, April, for coming down. And until we meet again, continue to do the math. Support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Dolly Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and Kern High School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.